Guys, this is Peace Sensei. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your flash cart on your R4. The flash cart I'm, I'm going to be using for this video is the R4 SDHC dual core. All right, to get started, you're going to need a flash cart. Any DS model, DS, DS Lite, DSi, or 3DS, all of them will work. And you're going to need a micro SD card and some way to put that into your computer, whether it be a micro SD to SD card adapter or a micro SD to USB adapter. Each will work fine. All right, after that, go ahead and plug your card into your micro SD card into your adapter, plug that into your computer, and I'll show you guys what to do next from there. After you've plugged in your micro SD card to your computer, you want to go to your file explorer. Okay, you're going to want to find it. Mine is right here. And you're going to want to format it. So right click on it. Go to the format option right here. Format it to FAT32. And go ahead and click start. Make sure there's nothing on the SD card that you want to keep because everything will be erased when you format it. All right. After the format is done, press OK. Go ahead and close this out. You're going to want to go to your browser and you're going to want to find the website that from which your R4 comes from. Um, it should appear on the R4 or in the manual. Or if you're using any other flash cart, um, it should appear there. For, for me, the website is r 4 i sdhc.com so I'm gonna go there all right and from here you want to go ahead and click on r4 download all right I am using the r4 sdh dual core so I'll go ahead and click on that go ahead and choose your language and it'll download the r4 firmware Go ahead and save that anywhere you'd like. I'm going to save it in my desktop. All right, after it's finished downloading, we're going to exit out. Here's the firmware. All you have to do, click extract to a folder, just extract it. And then what you want to do, open it up, copy all these files move them over to your R4. All right, after you've copied the files over to your R4, it's now time to add our DS games. So I recommend creating a ROMs folder just call it ROMs or NDS and then now we can copy over some games just copy over Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Diamond Make sure they are in the NDS format. So if they're zipped up, then go ahead and extract them. All right, after they extracted, you're officially done. Go ahead and eject your X, your X SD card. And I'll show you guys what to do next on the DS. Okay, so after you have put the micro SD card back into your flash card, as you can see, you've already done so here. We can now boot our system up. You should get this loading screen if you have an R4. And here we have three options. We have our set conf our config, which you can change some settings. You can change the skin. You can also change our sleep settings. We have a multimedia, which is a little multimedia player. You can play videos, music, and look at pictures. 
But what we're here for is our game section. So you want to go ahead and tap A on the game section. And all of your ROMs will be here. As you can see, we have Pokemon Heart Gold and Diamond, which we added earlier. Let's go ahead and start one up. Now, before we start one up, I want to go over these options. In the top, give you some information about the game. All right, you can use X and B to scroll down. Scroll down, you can enable cheats here. You can back up your save file. And you can also change different settings about the ROM. So let us go ahead and just launch the game here. Go ahead and click A. Now, make sure that when it's loading the ROM, you let it load and do not turn off your system when it's loading the ROM. Uh, if you turn off, if you turn off your system at this point, it can corrupt your save file, and you can lose all your save data. So it's important that you let it do that. So as you can see, we have Pokemon Heart Gold, and if at any point we want to get back out, just press L. A button's kind of stuck here. L R, and all the face buttons, and then we brought back. To the menu <clears throat> now you see we go to our save file since it created a save file um, we have two options here we can back it up and load and this will make sure that in case we accidentally corrupt it we can always return back so I do recommend backing it up because it can be very easy to corrupt and sometimes sometimes ROMs um, don't load or it'll take a super long time to load and obviously you can't just turn it off so make sure you always back up your save files and uh, yeah, the save files are saved the same ROM name, but they have a .sav at the end, so you can use them in other emulators if you'd like. And you can also transfer uh, saves from other emulators as well. But uh, that'll do it for this video, guys. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in another one. Peace.